Hi, welcome back to a brand new video on the channel. Today we're going to take a look at a very simple workflow that we can trigger directly from a SharePoint list. This is something that you can do also with files, but that's something maybe we can view on another video. What I want to show you today is how to duplicate one SharePoint list item. So imagine we have here this demo SharePoint list and we have some entries. And for some reason you need to duplicate one of these entries. How do you do it? So in this case, without any Power Automate workflow in the background, you would have to edit this in grid view and then copy and paste each of the entries in a new row. Or maybe go over the new button and then create the entries again in the fields. But that's something that is going to be very time consuming and imagine having not only one, two uh, columns, but I don't know, 20. So to do that a little bit faster, we can utilize a Power Automate workflow, which we can trigger directly from our SharePoint list item row. To learn how to do that, stick around. And if you like the video, please make sure to give the thumbs up and that you subscribe to the channel. Have fun and let's see how we can achieve that. Okay, so first of all, we need to go to Power Automate and create our Power Automate workflow. For that reason, I'm going to click here on the create action and I'm going to say instant Cloudflow because our flow is going to be triggered instantly from the SharePoint list item row. So let's give it a name and let's call it duplicate row flow. And I'm going to search here for uh, a selected item. This is my trigger, by the way. I'm going to say create. So I'm going to select my project management SharePoint site and my SharePoint list was my Excel repo list. There it is. Okay, so now I have selected my trigger settings. No? So my SharePoint site and my SharePoint list. Next, I want to do a create item in the SharePoint list from where I triggered this workflow. So I'm going to select the exact same SharePoint site and SharePoint list, my Excel repo list here. And when my parameters load, you can see here that I have title, employee claims. As you can see, those are my two columns. No, because attachment and ID, those are internal columns from the SharePoint list. So I'm going to click here in the title field and I'm going to add the dynamic parameter or dynamic field from my trigger for a selected item. So if we click here, show more, we see here that for a selected item, we have the ID of that item, the file name, and so on and so forth. User email, user name, but we don't have the information from that item. For that reason, before we create the item, we need to say here in between, get item. And we're going to use the SharePoint action, get item, not get items, very important. Otherwise we will have an apply to each loop. We are going to get one specific item in the project management site, in that exact same SharePoint list. And the item ID is something that we get from our selected item trigger. So that's very simple. And now in the create item section, oops, we can say here in the title field that we all want to use the title field from the get item. And as you can see, it's not creating any apply to each loops. And the employee claims is going to open a dropdown with some employees. We want to say enter custom value. And here we are going to use dynamic value employee claims. Okay, so actually that's it. We have triggered the flow. We are getting the item from the item that was triggered from. We're creating an item. And then after saving, our flow is ready to run. But we need to do one more step. Now that that's saved, we can go back and then go to my flows. When this loads, we can find our flow that we just created here. After clicking that, we will see in the URL that we have here the ID of the flow. That's something that we need. That's why I'm going to write it in my notepad. So this is my flow ID. Something else that I need is a code that I've been using also on previous videos. And I'm going to link you the code also in the video description. So this is a code that we use for triggering um, a Power Automate workflow directly from a SharePoint list or SharePoint library row item. And we use this to custom format the column where we want that button to be placed. 
So as you can see here, this will be our formatting, the JSON schema. And in here, we see that the action parameters requires the ID of the workflow. And here's where we are going to paste the ID of our workflow that we just created. So now our formatting code is ready to be used inside of our SharePoint list. For that reason, I'm going to create a new column. This will be a plain text column. And the name is going to be called um, run flow. It's something that you can rename as you wish. After saving, then we will see the column here. And then we can click here and then say column settings format this column. On the right hand side, we will open this conditional formatting and the format columns or format view. So what we want to do is go into the advanced mode. And here we are going to remove this schema and paste ours. After clicking save, we can say cancel. And we will see that this pops up this envelope. So you can search for other icons. Let's see, because the envelope is has here this icon name mail. So if we will write here link, let's see if this will look a little bit different. As you can see, it creates this link action uh, icon. I don't know if duplicate has also a icon. I don't think so. So to find new icons, I've already searched for this Office UI public uh, fabric icons website that I'm going to also link for you guys in the video description. And here are tons of icons that you can use inside of your SharePoint formatting column. And the one I chose is this one here. It looks very similar to um, like duplicating files or items. Maybe there's a better one, it doesn't matter. I'm just going to show you how you can use it. So if you select it, you see on the right hand side some information, but what you need is its friendly name. Now, you have here this font family name, but that's nothing that we can use. What you can do is on the icon, you can right click and you can copy the friendly name. After doing that, you can go back to your JSON in SharePoint and replace the name that's already there with that new friendly name. And here it is called Arrange Bring Forward. It's not duplicate, but it looks a little bit like that, right? So if I click now Preview, you will see that we have this icon here. If that's not something that looks like duplicate to you guys, you can choose another one. I'm going to say Save and Cancel and this now is ready to be used because it has our ID from the flow and also a nice looking icon. So let's say I'm going to need this demo data with my name duplicated. What I need to do is just go here and click that button. So this will now open on the right hand side a pane which is uh, doing the first connection with our Power Automate workflow. And as we've seen in my previous videos as well, you can also allow the user to do enter some data here. In our case, it's not necessary because we're just duplicating whatever we see there. Maybe what you need like uh, to populate a comment column whenever you duplicate, not like a versioning. Maybe you need to create a new version and you need to duplicate all the information except for the attachment, for example. And you allow the user to enter a comment for the changes that you have made so that you have like a version history. So this takes a while the first time and um, it's going to connect down to my SharePoint. I'm going to say continue and run the flow. Unfortunately, you cannot hide this. So it's going always to pop up. But uh, yeah, now if we click refresh, we should be able to see three items. And here you can see the second or the copy item that we just created. As you notice, I did not take the attachment with me. I just copied the data. And yeah, this is something that works pretty well. And if you want to copy this one here, you click there. This will open the pane again, hopefully this time a little bit faster. And after saying run flow, because it's not going to ask again for connection, hopefully. And after clicking there, we should be able to see our new entry in a matter of seconds. And there it is. 
Of course, as I said, you can extend this with attachments and comments and so on and so forth. And maybe you can embed in the Power Automate workflow a logic which says here, for example, okay, get me the um, version number and uh, or create a, your own version number, you know, like something like version uh, one, two, three, and write it also in a separate column and many, many more ideas that you might have. So that's it actually for this video. Pretty simple, hopefully effective. If you liked it, make sure that you give it a thumbs up and that you subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss any other future videos. Thanks for watching and have fun.